we had a lot of updates this past month, which I distilled down to five topics for today. Firebase extensions let you add functionality to your app quickly with pre-packaged configurable solutions. Once installed, each extension performs specific tasks in response to HTTP requests, cloud scheduling events, or triggering events from other products like Firestore or cloud messaging. You can now find relevant extensions for many products right inside the Firebase console for those products. So the Firestore panel in the console now shows the extensions that we see here, while we show similar relevant lists for auth, storage, and real-time database. And before you install an extension from extensions.dev, you can now see how many developers have that extension installed already as a quick way to gauge its popularity. And if you find an extension that engages in abusive or malicious behavior that has other problems, you can now report it to our team right from extensions.dev too. Now for an embarrassing topic. It turns out that I had missed multiple updates to the Firebase CLI, as they were no longer being published to our Firebase release Twitter feed. And while we caught up with most of the updates to web frameworks over Google I.O., here are a few of the other updates that I missed. The CLI now supports Node.js version 20 for web frameworks and cloud functions for Firebase. And it has dropped support for Node.js version 40. We added a set of x colon dev commands to publish and manage extensions. So these are for developers who build extensions for themselves and others that they want to publish on extensions.dev. And you can now manage Firebase app distribution groups with the new app distribution group create and delete commands. And we added a group alias option to the app distribution testers add and remove commands. And the good news is that we now have a dedicated documentation page for CLI releases, as we can see here. And we're including the CLI updates in the main release pages too, so that I can't forget them anymore. So check the link to catch the updates yourself going forward. A few years ago, we added support for the so-called long polling connections under the hood of our Firestore JavaScript SDKs. Long polling allows the client to continue to function in some uncommon constraint network conditions, such as when traffic is routed through buffering proxies, enterprise portals, or when antivirus software tries to filter network traffic. We now enable the logic to auto-detect the need for long polling in our SDKs, so your users will see fewer connectivity issues without you having to make any changes to the code. And if needed, you can configure the timeout for GET requests with long polling as shown in this code example. A few months ago, I told you that our engineering team had started writing detailed papers on how Firestore works internally, starting with an article called Understand Reads and Writes at Scale. These papers complement our existing documentation on how to use Firestore in your app, and they are great for those of us who want to learn more. We now added a second article called Understand Real-Time Queries at Scale. This article adds guidance on scaling your serverless app beyond thousands of operations per second or hundreds of thousands of concurrent users. The new article contains a wealth of information again, including this diagram on how real-time queries or snapshot listeners are fulfilled in nine easy steps. Well, okay, maybe it's not that easy, so be sure to read the entire article that I'll link below. And finally, some quick updates for developers that use our SDKs for iOS and other Apple platforms. Since SDK version 10.10, .10, calling cloud functions from Apple platforms can now opt into using limited use app check tokens that I mentioned last month. That reduces the risk of abusive replay attacks, but it adds extra overhead to the calls, so you should only use it for use cases that require the extra level of security. And if you use cloud storage on Apple platforms, our SDK will now report progress if you pass an optional closure to the put data async, put file async, or write async methods. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.